So okay. So I create just create an, a short small map. Um, uh, all these shortcuts for the modeling software are different. Um, here in the Entity tab is actually where we will create our own entity later. Uh, but we have the Info Player Start entity. We place it here into our map. And this entity has to be there, otherwise Quake 2 will not uh, start the map properly. Um, maybe duplicate this. Uh, let's see. So. Again, uh, for the mapping process, um, please refer to the dumpstruck.ds uh, YouTube channel. Really good. Um, so, I'll just. It's probably not the best way to build this, but. Okay, and then also duplicate again. The map wall here, okay. And by the way, um, if you make a map, these rooms you create, they never, uh, they always must be uh, must be um, closed, right? There must not be a hole. So if you would uh, put water in there, um, this room must be must not have any leakage so the water must not flow out otherwise um, the map compiling tools will actually complain and the original quake for for quake one um, the original quake i think would not load the map properly but like some modifications made it possible to actually have uh, open um, open rooms so now we just select everything Right, and go into the faces and use a nice texture, okay. <laughs> um, and also now we need some lights, otherwise everything will be pitch black. Um, so I'll put some lights in here. that and maybe some more all right cool so now we save this and we actually save it in base quake 2 and maps okay so we call this uh, Python Python no mansion dot map I actually the Python mansion save it all right and now um, let's look actually at the at this format for one second we just created uh, repos so let's go back here basically to maps and so as you can see these are all the definitions for the walls and you can see the texture names also and then there's a list of all the entities in the in this map hello so there should be somewhere our guy info player start right that's the starting position of the player later and Quake 2 will actually read this. Um, this, this these entities will put uh, will be put as they are into the final BSP file actually. So these will not be converted, and they will be read as a text file again, like because they just text in the BSP format. Um, they will be read by Quake 2, and there is a parser running uh, before the map starts getting all the information out of these 
entities and create them, like create the game version, the uh, game data structures. Okay, so now we have that. And now it's time to actually compile these. And what I did is I wrote a, um, a batch file. A batch file. Uh, now it's open, so we're there. All right. So what it does, it uh, asks the user to put in uh, like an argument, a percentage one, uh, allows the uh, the user of the script uh, on the command line to put in an argument, and this will be our map, uh, the Python mansion map, and then um, we copy this map file into the working directory. Like, oops, no good. Don't edit this uh, into the working directory, right? And then it will call. Um, Tools, map compilers to Windows 64, and then the bsp.exe, and then the working and map. Like it will call the we we copy it into the we copy the file into the working directory, and then the executables will work on that rather on the original save, right? And first of all, first there runs the uh, the BSP, then the Viz, and then the Light. Again, those two steps are optional, but we do them because other without the Light, with uh, without the Resiosity Red, we don't have um, we don't get any lighting contribution from these lights we put in there, um, and the whole map will look pretty flat. We can do this um, actually, uh, just for teaching purposes, I guess, <laughs> and. Um, when we're done with that and everything has compiled successfully, we can load the BSP into finally our um, engine. So here's the path to our Quake 2 repository, the base Quake 2 and the maps folder. And then we just um, go into this directory actually and call, um, and call the engine uh, with the parameter plus map, this is a Quake a uh, quake par parameter um, and it allows us to pass whatever map we want to start and this is exactly um, the map we specified here okay so let's try uh, the script uh, load in cmd so we say build and then pipe no mansion okay so now you can see this works. Can run around in our own map. Quite cool. Jump. Not a lot to do in here actually, and also quite claustrophobic because we can't ex escape. It's scary. But and also here we can see uh, first and foremost we can see um, there are no textures, right? And here the command line tells us. Um, that we cannot um, open, uh, that the Quake engine cannot uh, find the dot, uh, .wal file. We use Targa files, right? We, we put the textures into Targa files, so actually we have to modify the engine a little bit to make it read the Targa files for us. Um, but first, let me check. Did I actually um, copy the textures here? I did not. Um, so let's go back to the Quake Dev and the textures and copy them here. Oh, this is a large directory. One second. Uh, let's actually don't do this. We only need uh, these textures, right? So we make a new folder. And only copy the 
texture folder we actually use in here. And maybe this is not a really good way to do this. Maybe both the uh, Quake engine and Trench Broom should kind of refer to the same directory. Um, I had this set, set up this way at some point, but then um, whenever I, like sometimes I just want to use uh, or try stuff specific to Trench Broom and and don't affect the directory of uh, the data directory of the repository. So um, now when we start it, we won't have any success either, um, I assume. So let's load. Um, this is actually inconvenient because it doesn't show. One second. Um, so we run this again. So again, um, no success, right? Let's see where actually the, the textures are being loaded. And quite frankly, I spent probably, I don't know, close to an hour finding this, uh, where these are actually loaded. We can try, I can try and find this again. I, I made a note in which file uh, we have to go to make uh, Quake load the target textures for us. Um, and so let's see, um, maybe we can do the following. I just want to show the kind of the reverse engineering process here. And so I have the, this monitor scaling set. One, one second video. Can I dial this down a little bit? Yeah, okay. So I hope this is still readable uh, on the stream. Um, should be fine. Okay, so um, with map and then Pythno man, mansion, we can load it here. So it says um, gl underscore find image can't load textures and then the thing. So we look for gl find image, okay. So let's see, um, gl find image, all right, and here's the refresh gl, and let's just go through these, okay, load console characters, not really, um, draw, find, pick. This is for using PCX files. These are the indexed um, files actually, the 8-bit with an 8-bit um, palette. Uh, load tool, okay. So I assume we step, we come here when it tries to load the, let's set a breakpoint here actually, and run this. Um, oh, and one thing, thing, so always when we started from within the game, uh, from within the, um, from within Visual Studio, excuse me, um, then we always have to bring the console up, type map and then Python mansion. Every time we do that, uh, every time we start the game, so we don't want to do this actually. So we uh, do the same we did with the build script. Um, let me bring this over here again. Um, right, we, um, we have used the plus map and then the map we want to use. So we can do the same here, of course, we just go to properties and then I think debugging command arguments and we say plus map path no mansion. Okay, and now the it should just load the map instantly. Okay, so that's true. Let's go into the call stack, find image. Okay, it comes from find image and finds or loads the given image. Yep. And let's also see, go back in here. Um, 
the name. So yeah, this is one of our one of our textures tries to load, obviously. Um, so there is a Targa thingy, load TGA, right? And this is, uh, I remember when I did this uh, the first time last week, this is when I realized, okay, it should be actually possible to load Targa so I don't have to get STB um, image or another third-party library or parse it myself. Um, so there is a function that does this. And also, as you can see, maybe down here, it has like options for 24-bit and 32-bit target files. Um, so it should, be, should, should work, at least loading them should work. Displaying them is another thing, actually. Um, but loading them should not be an issue for the engine. <clears throat> and I believe the target files are actually used for making screenshots. I don't know what else they are being used for. Like, I don't know why, if Quake 2 actually loads any target files. I'm not sure. Um, I only know of the wall file and the PCX files. Um, okay. So, um, actually, maybe. I want to bring this up again. So I'll spend some time doing this, right? So I want to be like, I want to be on the screen. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking it might be time for another cup of coffee actually, but um, no, first finish this target thing, right? Um, so where does this come from? Load text info. Ah, here we see, if we go down the call stack, right? Or up the call stack, like from where, whatever perspective <laughs> you want to see it. Um, it actually looks for, so the lump T is a data structure that is actually used to load parts of the BSP file. The lump T is, uh, like as the name maybe says, uh, some part of it. And this lump T is probably uh, the lump for textures. So if we go further down, load brush model, it says load text info. So here you can see it parses the, um, the text info of this thing. And there, there is, as you can see in the BSP file, there are vertices, edges, um, their lighting, I think this is the for the color maps that are created by the radiosity tool. Um, um, yeah, this is the vis, the um, potentially visible set, um, leaves and notes. And yeah, this is actually kind of the data structure needed for building the BSP tree. Uh, it's a binary tree, right? And yeah, as I said, maybe another time. It's a really interesting thing, I guess, um, to talk about um, in its own. But let's go back in here. So as you can see, we built, we used the name, right? Name here, let's go, oh, actually. So let's break, let's make a breakpoint here. Okay, so now, Let's see, name is nothing in texture. Um, is one of our texture files, Mac one that tells us, okay, that's one in our texture folder and it loads the cliff black 10 uh, texture. But it doesn't have the actual uh, image format attached. So what happens here, um, there's just a name here like an, a stack variable and it attaches the the wall extension to um, to this name here right and puts it into name again so in name then later we have the texture file and now it's the wall file and now it tries to find this wall file and it's not available so the 
the super quick fix we can do uh, is changing this to GGA, right? And then what we have to do, um, this is the GL underscore, it's in refresh, so we have to recompile the rendering module. Um, where is it built? All right. And then let's see what happens. Okay, now we can see um, our textures here, right? It's really beautiful, really beautiful room. Also, proper lighting. Um, I want to show you what it looks like when we don't actually... Um, do this. Um, um, actually, like this. So we don't compute the radiosity. So let's see uh, what happens then. So let's run the script again. Engine starts. Yeah, see? So this is completely flat. Looks quite boring. No lighting at all. So let's, let's do that again. Okay, good. So I don't know, like, this is quite annoying. Um, downloading textures so I click on flag. Because this takes a long time. If we have more, uh, more than one texture, um, and it all it, it it calls this three times. Um, Downloading textures, server does not have this file. Um, okay, this is inconvenient because in my tests, this does not, this did not happen. Um, uh, sorry, what was the, <laughs> what was the error message again? Uh, server does not have this file. Okay, let's see server. Uh, So it's in client, see the parts in client is part of the actual, um, let's see, CL parse, is this, yeah, CL, CL client, where are you, uh, can I, uh, open containing folder. Um, but what module does this actually belong to? I don't see it here. Is this of the... Oh, this is interesting. Why can't I find this file? Let's see. Um, CL par. Oh, CL pars. <laughs> um, it's called CL pars. Okay. Uh, and it's only. Okay. Then it should be. Sorry, I was looking for the wrong thing. Uh, CL pars. Yeah, it's part of the main engine. So, don't the message has been received. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I think um, I'll deal with that later. Um, Geo model. So I just want to make sure I did the right thing. Um, Geo model, let's see. No, this is correct. I did this the same way before, actually. Um, 
Okay, but now the problem is actually if we try to run um, a map that doesn't use the Targa file format, right? Like base one is one of the original things. Now, like <laughs> it can't run, uh, can't load the textures, the wall textures uh, properly anymore that use the actual wall file format, and maybe we still want to do that. So. Um, what I do instead is still say maybe try to use the wall. Um, so so this returns actually either not null or um, and I checked this before. It loads this, you saw this red texture, like this default texture. Let's do this again, actually. Um, base one, no, sorry, map base one. So whenever Quake cannot find the texture, it will load the, uh, oops, it will load this, uh, this checkerboard, this red te checkerboard texture with like, like, yeah, I don't know what this is, but so you can immediately see that there's something wrong, something missing. Um, so on this texture, there's a global variable actually for that, this texture. And let's see, what is it called? Uh, load pick, I guess it, uh, let's see. Um, it loads something like, um, I have to check. Like something, a file called no texture or data called no texture. Um, yeah, and this is kind of a pre-computed uh, texture stuff that will just be loaded when uh, find image fails, right? Um, so what I actually do is go back to gl underscore model and say, uh, and by the way, if you wonder why this is in the model thing, like model low text info, um, there are different styles of model. This is like a image type wall and there are several image types for the sky box pick, uh, not sure, sprite and skin. The skin is for the actual um, character models. So actually, and I'm not sure, so I do this. So if we are now uh, or out image is equal to render uh, no texture, um, right. Then we try to load the target version and this might not be optimal because now we parse everything like in case wall is not found we have to parse everything like do this again search for a texture again even though it might be um, also not available, it takes us maybe some time, but, um, so let's say if this is the case, we do, uh, and we say, put load wall, um, yeah, uh, try maybe then trying TGA texture, okay? Then we make this, well, then we actually try to load this, right? Now we try to use the targa. Um, and if this still is, um, let's see. Like, like let's 
check this again. Um, then we actually say, hey, I also couldn't load this, couldn't load um, TGA either. Um, use uh, no text. Sure. Okay, so let's try this. Recompile. <clears throat> Oops. Okay, this is still okay. Um, yeah, now you see, like, hey, I couldn't find the wall. Uh, trying to find the Targa version. Um, maybe should put the line break there. Okay, well, now when we use an original Quake map, base one, this should be okay. All right, and now we can play some Quake. All right. It's funny, always I start just playing this for just debugging or something. I find myself just going on and <laughs> play the game. Oh, um, actually, should get the shotgun, right? So it's down here. No, to the left there is someone. It's very sneaky. So I have bad aim, but these have even worse aim than me. Yeah, come on. Okay. Um, Believe it or not, in on land parties, I was actually quite good in Quake 3 Arena. Oh yeah, now we can just blow this up here, right? Hey, come on. Okay. All right, um, enough of this. <laughs> um, yeah, this bugs me with the downloading textures. I don't know why this happens. Um, I will maybe release another video um, specifically addressing this issue. Um, but now we are able to actually, yeah, uh, build a map, uh, load it uh, into Quake 2. We have done nothing so far regarding entities. Um, so, <laughs> but uh, we'll get into that now and it's going to be fun. So I'll take a short break now and um, get some new coffee and refuel, so to speak, and see you in a minute.